today's lesson, we're going to take a look at how to laser engrave photos on clear acrylic. This normally isn't too hard to do, but I'm going to take you through the steps of how I got some good results uh, using some different techniques in Corel Draw. This is an interesting lesson for me. This just came from a customer that was having some issues trying to get the image properly done in acrylic. You can see from the image I've got selected here, this was their first image that they got uh, to laser engrave. Um, the, the image right here is basically an air diffusion image and you can see that um, the quality is not very good. Uh, this quality is really dictated by the photo itself and if I zoom in on this photo as I've told many people to do, you'll notice that this image is very compressed. You can see how, how everything is very unfocused, how everything is blurry, there's not a lot of detail in the image, and this is due basically to the fact that the image is low resolution, it's only 72 dpi, and there's a lot of compression that's been, that's been done to this photo. This photo is really good for Facebook, but that's about all it's good for. The image above it is an image that I did as a dithered image, and you can see the quality is a little bit better, but again, it's still not good enough for what this customer was looking for. Um, I had said to the customer, I said, well, can you uh, send me a, you know, a better looking, uh, like a better quality photo? And they were said, well, you know, it's a good photo. I, my customer said it came from a photographer. And I said, well, yes, it did come from a photographer, but as we can see from Windows Explorer, that photo was only 85K. And that is normally a very good indication that the photo you're going to get to work with is not going to be very good. The image that I eventually got, which produced the, the other image, was basically 3 meg. Don't forget this image, too, is being produced at a 9 by 12 inch size. And this is just way too small. I mean, when I looked at the file size, I said, oh my, this isn't going to work. I did give it a try just to see what I was going to get, but I knew I, was, I, knew I wasn't going to have very good luck doing it. You can see from the right here, I don't think, it, I think you can pretty well be hard pressed to tell which one is the photo and which one's the one on, on the, the original photo and which one's the one on the acrylic. This is the one on the acrylic right here and this is the original photo. And if I zoom in on that photo, you can see how much better the detail is. Again, you know, not too hard to see, you know, where the issue is going to be. You know, if I superimpose these two right here, you can see that we're really losing a lot of detail that's in his sh shirt that's not there anymore. I'm zoomed in a lot more on here and I'm seeing a half a heck of a lot more detail here. You can also tell too that the image co is coming in is at 300 dpi and the image here is only 72 dpi. So again, 300 dpi is going to give me a better image. Uh, I can scale that down. Um, I can also make it bigger if I want and not, and not lose an, the detail that, that uh, um, when I laser engrave this. So let's take a look at how I basically manipulated this photo and got this finished image here. The first thing I like to do with a photo before I go ahead and do any adjustments is actually make the photo size as um, in terms of what the finished size is going to be. So for in this case, the customer was looking for a 9 by 6 inch type image. Luckily, this image had already been cropped to 9 by 6. So once I type in 9 here in the size, I get my 6 inch height because it's, I've had my lock on and it's scaled the, the photo down. My next step is to go to bitmaps. I'm going to go to mode and I'm going to go to grayscale. I always like to take my images out of, RG, out, out of an RGB mode and get them into a grayscale mode. Um, typically, this gets rid of any color information in the image, makes the file a little bit smaller, um, and I can always see an image better when it's actually in grayscale as opposed to being in color. It's easier for me to make adjustments um, with the photo when I'm actually in a grayscale type image. The next thing I like to do um, in the case of this photo is if you take a look at the photo, there's actually a lot of white and black in this image. There's, there's really, you know, it's, it's, there's not a lot of grayscale shading. It's either black or white. This is a problem we see a lot in wedding photos where you've got a groom in a black tux and a, and a bride in a white gown. And it's very makes it very difficult when you want to do your adjustments. 
The other thing to consider here is that we're putting this on acrylic. Uh, if you've done glass, my, if you've done my glass tutorial, you know that the, the, the thing that we need to do with the photo is we actually need to invert it into a negative because the image when it lasers on acrylic goes white. That means that uh, whatever's black is going to become white. Therefore, I need to mirror, I need to uh, create a negative of this image. I, I like to do this in this case of this image here before I actually do any adjustments. So my first thing I'm going to do is go to transform and I'm going to invert the colors. This is the way that I want the laser to engrave. So remember, whatever's black is going to become white. So remember, this will be a clear and this will be a white. So what I want to do now is I actually want to go to effects, adjust, and I'm normally I've used the contrast enhancement, but in this case I want to use the tonal curve. On the left is my, my original image, and on my right will be my preview image. So what do you want to do here? If we, if we zoom, if I click here and you zoom in, you notice here what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get rid of, trying to bring out a little bit more detail here and, and probably reduce a little bit of detail here. Okay, and then I'm going to do that, and you notice here, if I slide the slider up, I'm going to make the dark, the dark images whiter, and if I pull this image, so if I take this image, let's take this corner here. You'll notice how everything becomes, all the darks become whiter. If I take this and I slide down here, you notice everything becomes darker. Again, you can look at the histogram at the bottom and that's a pretty good indicator to you that uh, what I'm doing here. <clears throat> what I want to do is I want to come somewhere around here and I want to move up a little bit and notice that it's starting to make my darker areas whiter. It's also making my whiter areas whiter, and I'm going to make an adjustment for those next. You notice that this dot here, um, <clears throat> I can click a couple of different spots, and sometimes you may have to fool around with this a little bit to get the proper starting. You can always come back and, <clears throat> excuse me, go reset, and you can see what, what the change had done. So again, if I slide up, I'm going to lighten up some of my darker areas, and if I grab this and I pull down, I'm now darkening up some of my whiter areas. Well, again, look at the difference here between these two here. I got a little bit more detail in the white arm here, but notice how much lighter she is and his face is. Again, this is going to give me a little bit better tonal differentiation when it comes to lasering. And I'm going to get a little bit better detail. If I left the image like this right now, I'd probably get a little bit of overburning on here and I'd probably lose some detail. So again, I'm sort of striving a little bit more for something here. And you can see the changes that have been done here. So again, if I reset this and I slide this image up, you notice I'm pushing my darks to the right. And again, if I went right up, Again, it becomes too much. I think you're, hopefully you're getting the point here. So I'm going to bring this up. And then we're going to bring this down. So now I've got a little bit better change in my, in my tonal value here. And again, if you want, I could even select a little bit higher here. And come down a little bit better. So you can see how much change there is. So this is really what I'm looking for right here. The nice thing about this is that I've made two adjustments to the, to the dark and the white, and it's given me a lot better tonal values for my image. I don't have such a, dark, a lot of darks and a lot of whites. I've sort of got more in-between type colors, which is really what you want in a photograph. Especially when you're laser engraving it, we want to even the we want to even these 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 harsh uh, tones out of the image. This is going to give me a lot better detail. So say OK. The next step is to go up to bitmaps, <coughs> sharpen, unsharp mask. Again, you can see here this is the original image on the left, and this is the image that will be transformed. Again. What the Unsharp Mask is trying to do is to create some visual variation in the tones. So you can see here that I go from 
a dark to a white and there's a very there's not as much of a blurry type change as there is in the original and the problem with with photographs in general is they tend to be blurry in nature just through the creation the creation of the actual uh, digital photograph so what we're trying to do is we're trying to sort of give ourselves a little bit more of a a harsh look uh, just to create more detail normally what I like to do is I like to drag my percentage up to about 500 now my radius because we're using an other dithered uh, image I'm going to keep my radius around three and again if you zoom in you can see that there's a little bit of differentiation here um, this is the original here you can see it's a little bit more blurry and you can see how the unsharp mask is really bringing the detail out you can see the the cracks here in the lips you can see the eyebrows the the eyelashes the hair there's more detail here again there is detail here but you see it better our eyes see it they don't see the all we see here is a really we see that gradual change but this allows the hair to really jump out at us and this is really what we want to do when we want to have detail come out in a photograph this is something we I do all the time photographers do this all the time when they when they take a photo of an image uh, like a, a, photo, a photograph is basically run the iron sharp mask because it, it takes some of that blurriness out of the original photograph and gives it a little bit more structure say okay and you can see that the image now has been generated and again if I zoom in on it really hasn't changed that drastically but enough that it'll give us a little bit more detail if I go on do you can see the original and if I put the mask back and you can see what I've got here and I've got some good detail in her her dress and you can see his sweater there's good detail here and if we took a look at the actual original photograph you'll notice that we've got the detail in that photo that I lasered so if I go back to the beginning let's just bring this right back up to the beginning here Here's the original photograph here on the top and here's the image laser engraved on the acrylic so you can see I've got good detail here again you gotta you know if we wanted to really be good about this we may have gotten rid of these watermarks here uh, but again you can see I've got good detail in the in the dress and his sweater's got good detail correspond this with this photo here really is nothing here I mean this is just like night and day in terms of the quality of the photo that's being generated by the laser and again this is really you know the most important thing that we got here was we got a half decent image of the people you know we didn't accept this I didn't accept this from my customer um, who didn't accept it who eventually then go back to his customer and didn't accept it from them because I told him I said you know you're gonna get this and this just was this is what they were complaining about so this customer wasted a lot of time because he didn't ask for the proper photograph to begin with so it was a good lesson for them and it's a, hopefully it's a good lesson for you so that you won't do the same thing uh, but again it's very important you get the right photograph you make your adjustments and you use minimal power you don't hit this with too much power because all you're going to end up doing is generating dust you obliterate a lot of the detail in the image and you just won't get the results that you're probably looking for. Now if it's just basically a dithered image which is what this is I don't have to do anything else other than just go file print and I'm gonna come here this is supposed to be 9 by 6 I'm going to run at 600 dpi now I'm running an 80 watt laser here speedy 380 watt my power is going to be probably about 45 my speed is 100 and I'll leave my PPI at auto make sure my air assist is off and then say okay this is very important on when you're laser engraving photos on acrylic is that you do not get any depth 
All we're looking for is a surface etch, very light surface etch. Now you gotta be a bit careful here because if you get it too light, then you may find that you may, you may find that you may fade out a little bit on the edge. And if you do, you can always come in here and just put, click on your, your raster correction setting. And again, if you want to put that on, you can uh, just keep this correction factor down around 10 uh, and then say, okay, and that if in case, if it starts to fade out a little bit on the edges, that'll sort of adjust for it because I'm trying to use very minimal power. The, the, the less power I get away with, the more detail I'm going to show. And if, if I'm trying to give a really good photograph, then I want to show the most detail that I can, can generate. So there's the image, we'll file print. And then basically all I need to do is send it over to laser machine.